sixth grade, it's Miss Babylon Dean. I am here to tell you about day number two. Day number two, we've got a couple of things we're going to do today, okay? So good afternoon, awesome first grade learners. I had to change morning to afternoon. Um, today is Tuesday, March the 31st, 2020. It is day two of um, our e-learning. A couple of things we're going to do today um, in our learning. Uh, we are going to do some phonics together. We're not going to do a lot. Um, we're going to go over some of our sounds. We're going to read mammal body parts, uh, pages four to nine, in our packet. And you should have had a packet already. Um, we're going to go over the reading response for day number two. Um, it is also on Seesaw. If you're not on Seesaw, you don't have internet access, it's totally fine. You're going to do it in your packet. And the last thing I'm going to add on here is we're going to talk a little bit about math. What you need to be expected to do for math. Okay? So for right now, um, the last group we talked about are controlled vowels. Here's our, our controlled vowels. A, it starts A, R, O, R, E, R, I, R, U, R. Okay. Each of these, the top two make a different sound. The bottom three, they make the same sound. But we got to know which one to use in a word. So we have A, R. AR are found in words like star and car and far. Uh, OR uh, makes the OR sound like in the word fork or corn. Okay. ER, IR, and UR, those are words, those are sounds that we find in words like her, girl, and fur. So these three at the bottom, they make the er sound. So we're going to go over each sound right now. A-R makes the R sound. So like in the word far or in the word car. Okay. So R, our action we're going to make a pirate motion and we're going to go R. Okay, so we're going to go R like a pirate. R. So it makes the R sound. Okay, next we have O R. O R is like in the word fork. So we're going to go, like we have a fork in our hand. I'm going to pretend my uh, marker is a fork. A fork. No eating. Fork. It makes the OR sound. OR. Or, look at my lips when I make that. Or, okay? Then ER, IR, and UR, they make the ER sound. They make the ER sound. So, ER, ER, ER. And the motion we came up with that um, is that the bird, in the word bird, B I R D, B. Er, the three phonemes. We did bird, like the bird is flapping its wings. Er, er. Or we did a surfer. So we did the surfer with the er, okay? Er, er, sir. Okay, so now we're going to jump into our reading for today. So in your packet, you have the book Mammal Body Parts. Today, we are going to read only pages four to nine, okay? And then we're going to talk about what is this part of the text all about? Not the whole book. What is this part of the text about? So it's going to be about animal body parts, but which part of the animal, okay? And it's a mammal, not just an animal, a mammal body part. Then I'm going to share, share with you what you're going to do for reading. And then we're going to do some math, okay? So I'm going to share my screen with you, and you are going to be able to see the book in front of you. So right here we have 
Um, I'm going to switch my web camera so you can see me. There you go. Okay, so mammal body parts. Remember, we're only going to read to page number nine. So there's two headings, okay? And these are the two parts that we're going to read. Hint, hint. That's what you're going to put on the first line. Okay, so over here, mammal body parts. Part of a mammal. You have you are a mammal too. So you have parts as well. What is a mammal? Mammals are animals that have hair or fur. Mammal mothers feed their babies milk. Dogs and humans are mammals. Whales are mammals that live in the sea. Hey, I have a connection. We did this yesterday or learned about this yesterday in our first text all about mammals. That's the first book in your packet that you had for day one. If you have not read that, you might want to go back and read it and do day one. This is all due on Friday. I will be calling every single parent on Friday. So um, remember, this exact same book is in your text. Exact same layout too. So Dogs and humans are mammals, okay? Whales are mammals that live in the sea. I learned that yesterday, along with dolphins. Here's a camel. A camel is a mammal. Cam, uh, sorry, mammals do not look, do not, mammals do not all look the same. Their bodies can be very different from each other. He has some seated, okay? Let's take a look at the parts of their bodies. So as I look at these two pages over here, six and seven, the heading on the top of this is going to be I. So that means all I'm learning on these two pages is about a mammal's eyes, okay? Mammals have two eyes. Some mammals have eyes in the front of their head. This tarsia, has very large eyes to see in the dark. Tarsias are nocturnal. And that word is bolded because it's a vocabulary word. Nocturnal means that the animal is active at nighttime. All right, we learned about that with the raccoon yesterday. It's nocturnal, it is more active during the nighttime and resting during the daytime. So it's the opposite of the human that are mammals. Wow, I learned from the words that tarsias are a mammal that is nocturnal. I also learned from the words, remember that's our goal today, what did you learn from the words and the pictures? So from the words that a tarsia is a mammal that has large eyes to help it see in the dark. Um, let's go on to this page. Mam many mammals, such as this mouse, have eyes on the sides of their heads. This mouse's eyes help it to see all around. It can look out for danger. So right now, you are a mammal. You have eyes at the front of your head. You see this way. But a mouse have eyes on the side so it gets a bigger picture of what uh if danger is coming towards it okay so that's what i have read on this page for eyes okay so we want to think about what we learned from the words there's a lot of great information and you can even think about what you learned from the pictures i learned from the picture that this a tarsia has really large eyes or large eyes to see in the darkness, because this is a picture taken in the nighttime. Our last two pages for today's activity. Wow, the heading on here says ears. Ears uh, is also going to be the topic of these two pages. So that means everything we read about on here tells me about ears okay and we want to look about information we learn from the book not information we already knew like i already know that an elephant has large ears so i'm not going to write on my paper i learned elephants have large ears but what i learned 
is the detail about the ears that I can write in my book. So let's go back to ears. This is a cat. Many mammals have very good hearing. Cats can move their ears one at a time. Wow, Miss Bagwendy did not know that. So that's something I learned from the words in the text. This movement helps the cat know where sounds are coming from. That's good to know. I've seen cats move like one part of their ears, but I don't, I didn't know that's why they can do that. See, I'm learning just as much as you. Elephants have huge ears. Already knew that in my background knowledge. They can hear sounds from very far away. Elephants also help, oh, sorry, flap their ears to keep them cool. Whoa. I learned from the photographs that elephants have really large ears. They have large ears to keep them cool. See how I took the author's words and I put them into my own words? So today when I'm writing, I'm going to show you in your packet what you're going to do, but I'm going to get a whiteboard for a second. Okay, and I'm going to also model this writing. Okay, and I need to model it on the, the whiteboard with the lines. Okay, so for right now, in your packet, you have this text, right? If you keep turning, you will find a pic two pages that look like this. It says day two reading, and the other page says day two writing. I'm gonna explain what you need to do for reading first, then writing. So I'm gonna close my screen share, but you now you just see me, okay? So over here, right here, you see day two reading. This is just what we read, okay? We read about mammal body parts. We read, pages four to nine, and we stopped right there. We read about two parts of a mammal. So, and let's see if we can answer this question. This part of the text that we just read is about what? And don't just write ears and eyes, okay? Well, whose ears and eyes? Okay, so this part of the text is about mammals, eyes, and ears. That's what you're going to write on the line. That's that part of the text. Over here down below, just like yesterday, um, you're going to do the same thing throughout the whole week. Okay, it's the same exact thing. List three details or facts that, about mammals um, and their body parts that you learn from the words. And I underline, I learned, okay? So on these four pages that we just read, four to nine, I'm gonna talk about one thing I learned. So one thing I learned from the words was that a tarsia is an animal, that it is a mammal that is nocturnal. So I'm gonna write that on my board. And I'm gonna show you the best that I can um, on my board how to do this and what does it look like, okay? So, so here's my board. I'm using these lines to help you. I'm gonna start with a capital letter. I, finger space, learned a tarsia. <sighs> I, can't, I can't remember how to spell that. Well, I know that I have this packet in front of me. I can go back and look at it. If you're doing this book on Maya, which it is on Maya, you can look at it and stop it and look at the words. Also, Maya will reread the book to you. So I encourage you to reread this book on Maya. So I'm looking at it. It says T A T A R. And look, it has the A R in it. Tar. Yeah. Now there's an S in there that makes a C sound. It has that different sound in there. So I learned a tarsier is a mammal. Mammal. Mm, um, two M's makes one sound. O is a mammal that. 
sorry, is not, oh gosh, how do you spell nocturnal? And noc, you can always look back into the text to find that. Er, no. Period. Okay? That's one thing I can write. Okay? Another thing that I learned from just the, hold on, get my eraser here. Another thing I learned from the, the words, I learned that uh, cats can move their ears one at a time. But I'm not going to write those words that the author wrote. So I'm going to write, I'm going to write, okay? Some mammals, changing up my way of writing. Notice I start with a capital letter. Some mammal, there's a finger space, Mammals like cats using this dash line to write my words can finger space move one ear at a time and time is a long vowel sound so t i'm that says tim i need the e to make the i say its name and that end with a period okay first grade writers okay so you're going to write a response about three re three things you learn from the words now miss babundine also learned from the pictures so in your packet at the very bottom, I was doing this with the last group over here. Oops, can't see that. Uh, three things I learned about mammals and their body parts from the photographs. Okay, we talked about in the last group that mammals can have two ears. So someone wrote, I learned, and remember, I learned is right there in the book. I learned, and we wrote mammals have two ears okay to hear with um, and then you can tell me about different kinds of mammals and what did you learn think about the elephant what does it use its ears for um, so put it in there that's going to be your response to your reading the second thing you're going to do if you flip the book over the packet over this is day two day two's writing okay this is your question what is happening in your life? And there's two more prompts, okay? It says, what did you enjoy doing today? So I've already gotten a couple people's um, response in. Their parents took a picture of what they did and sent it to me so they can get credit because it's still learning time. Um, we'll be calling parents and asking them to send me pictures so I can put it in the grade book. Um, one person said that he's thankful that he gets to see his friends on Zoom every day. Um, it makes him feel glad to see their face. He also said that he was very thankful for his mom, that she helps him with the computer and with the reading. So there's two things. What are you thankful for as well? Remember, don't forget to start each sentence with a capital letter and with a, your sentence with some kind of punctuation, a period, a question mark, and an exclamation mark. And good writers and good readers always go back to reread to make sure we have things that are spelled correctly. You have the book in front of you. If you don't have the book in front of you, I think the school is going to be open tomorrow. The packets can be still picked up tomorrow. Um, it's open from nine to one, I think. Um, so oops, there's one more thing I said I was gonna do math, right? So if you just have a packet today, you are going to go ahead and you should have already started um, pages in your, your packet. This is an a review of what we've done before. So this is a group of 10. This is one group. This is another way to show 10. We could show 10s and 1s. So that means these are all separated, but these are together. That's one group of 10. This is one, two, three. That's three groups of 10. But when I count them, I'm not going to say one, two, three. I count them as 10, 20, 30. 
Well, right now it says three ten. So three groups of ten is the same as three groups of ten. Oh, I gave you the answer. Three tens is the same as if we broke all of these apart, they would be it separated. And this is a group of ten. This is a group of ten, and this is a group of ten. So we would count ten. Oops, let me do this with a pencil. We would count 10, 20, 30. So we would write 30 on the line. I had to explain this one to another friend. She was saying if we took six 10 rods and we broke them up, we would still have six. And I was like, no, we would have more than that because it's a 10 rod. Each 10 rod have 10 of these in there, okay? So then we would count 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. On the back, you would be counting to see how many groups of 10 you have, or is this 10, is this ones? This is not ones, these are tens. Is this tens or ones? No, this is ones because they're all broken apart. You would have to count how many you have. Do you have, you circle your answer, do you have 20 groups of 10? Does that look like 20 groups? Or does that look like 20 ones? So how many would you have here? The last one on this page says circle groups of 10. You're going to be doing it. So I, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So I circled this group. And I think this is another group. This is another group. And this is another group. I'm going to have to count them to make sure there are groups of 10. How many groups of 10 do you have? Well, if this is one, two, three, four, four groups of 10. So I have four tens all together. Next couple of pages, we're going to go through it, okay? It's talking about coloring your group of 10. So over here, they have three tens. So they want you to color in your groups of 10. So this is 10, 20, 30. They didn't need to color in the rest of it because it's not a group, a three groups of 10. So over here, it's 60. So you're going to have to color in six groups of 10. So over here, I'm going to do my best so you can see it. This is 10, this is 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Here is 60. But that means it's one, two, three, four, five, six groups of 10. That's why we have six over there. We're going to do the same thing for 70. You're going to do the same thing for 80. Down here, you're going to have to look at the, sorry, I wrote on it on accident. How many groups of 10 do you have? How many groups of 10 do you have? If you broke that out, those 10s into ones, how many ones will you have? The bottom part of it here, Pal and Mo have the same number of cubes. So they have the same number. Some of Mo's cubes are in the cup. So basically, draw to show the number of cubes in Mo's cup. So you have 10, 20. So together they have 20 each. So Pal have 20 and Mo have 20. So you're going to have to count how many this is and you're going to have to draw the extras to show how many Mo has. Remember they both have 20. So this should equal to 20 right here. Okay, we're gonna move on to the back. I'm gonna have you guys start the next page. Draw two tens and 10 more ones. So here's 10, 20, and there's 10 more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Together, we have three groups of 10 because this is a group of 10. It's not looking like this one because it's not like a 10 rod, but this, we can always trade it in for a 10 rod, okay? Uh, draw three tens and 10 more ones. So you're gonna go 10, 20, 30, and then you're gonna do 10 ones. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, okay? That you have to remember what are your tens and what are your ones, okay? And then the last page you're gonna do here, it says Pat counts three tens. Allie counts 30 ones, which is less. Explain your writing. So you're gonna have to figure out that answer. It's a comparing one in a second, okay? So that's basically what I have for day number two, boys and girls. 
Um, I'm so grateful. I'll tell you what I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for you guys, but I still got to make a video and send it out. Um, I have been trying to call parents yesterday and today. I will try to call some more parents. Um, I am going to also touch base with you, ask your parents to send me a picture of what you've done so far so they can get, you can get credit. Um, unfortunately, we will be um, doing this until May. Um, so I still have to give you a report card. So parents, I'm still required to give them a report card. It's not a break from school. And I don't want you to think that it is a break from school because we're still doing this learning. They're still going to get to go to second grade and we don't want them to fall tremendously behind. Okay. Um, know that I love each of you and all my meetings with some love. Um, and I will see you again tomorrow. Please be on the lookout for a read aloud video that I'm going to send um, you guys. Okay, so bye. See you again tomorrow.